Live from the Hackensack Meridian Health Stage 17, high above Madison Square Garden at the OG Podcast Network Studios in the center of the universe, New York City. It's the Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Hour, starring Rob Bartlett and the Radio Comedy Players with Steve Mecca and a band to be named later. And tonight's special musical guest, Media Crime. And now, here's your host, Rob Bartlett. Davy Jones. Welcome. Welcome to the Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Hour. How many people do we have here tonight, just by a show of hands? How many people? Good, all of you are here. <laughs> we're very glad you're here. Um, we're uh, episode two. We uh, had, our pilot, had our pilot last week, and uh, they decided to bring us back again. So uh, we're lucky. We weren't sure, but we're back. <laughs> you're here. You weren't here last week. Thank you for finally showing up. <laughs> we waited for you. Uh, those of you who are watching us uh, live stream on Facebook, just want to let you know that uh, this show will be available for download on iTunes and OG Podcast Network tomorrow. And uh, we also have a new uh, YouTube channel. YouTube. Don't be too excited now. I guess I should have done that warm up before the show to just tell them, like, you got to laugh and applaud, even if you're not feeling funny. <laughs> A bargain, will you? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You notice they've mastered the art of the fake laugh. It's one of the things that's a requirement to work for me, to master the fake laugh. Um, we have a great show for you tonight. Media Crime as a special musical guest tonight. Yay! Long Island Strong. Um, but let's, uh, let's say hello to our cast. What do you say? Please welcome a man who needs no introduction. Rob, I'd like to into in, in, yeah, no, Andy Smithy from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> from the Upright Citizens Brigade and appearing weekly at the Magnet Theater here in New York City in the musical improv group Public Pool, Alyssa Alter. <laughs> New York theater actress, writer, producer, and star of the short film The Weight of a Feather, Whitney Johnson. <laughs> Just back from the national tour of Phantom of the Opera, where he's playing the chandelier, I believe. <laughs> Mr. Constantine Pappas. <laughs> a woman who's been called a spitfire with a Broadway belt and endearing poignancy. The always endearingly poignant, my future ex-wife, Ms. Mandy Lee Pantyhose Thompson. <laughs> and our spiritual leader, the one, the only, Except no substitutes live in 3D, Ms. Megan Samard. Thank you. Thanks. What, what was that? I oh. said thank you so much. What's, what's with the Kim Kardashian voice? I don't know. I've just been doing a lot of social lately. Okay. It's just happening. Okay. Yeah. Well, can we lose the voice now? Yeah, sure. Good, just, good, good. Okay. Uh, Megan's uh, running our Instagram, uh, the official Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Instagram. Is that yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, she also tweets from time to time on our Twitter account, at Robbie Radio. I want you guys to write all these things down, because I did, because I can't remember them all. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter. Oh, before we go any further, um, we should say that uh, our Dreamboat musical director, Steve Mecca, and a band to be named later. Oh, I like that Dreamboat yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, no, I know. It's, it's written here, otherwise I wouldn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, take it. I'll take it. Do you follow uh, Twitter, folks? Do you follow them? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is really not working out. Um, I follow uh, Pope Francis. And if you, if you don't follow Pope Francis, I, I urge you. This guy is the greatest tweeter on the planet. He tweets like every 20 minutes, more than the president. <laughs> Pope Francis. And, and here's one from before. I wanted to share it with you. Don't tell anyone, but I like the pointy hat better than the yarmulke. Makes me look taller. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he just tweeted, he just tweeted. The Dalai Lama is coming over for lunch tomorrow. You know what that means. Hashtag no meatball hero Tuesday. <laughs> We're going to be checking him out during the show. Um, 
So I'll give you updates, because <laughs> I know you're going to be hanging on the edge of your seat, wondering what's going on. You know, people always ask me, they say, Rob, because that's my name, Rob, <laughs> did you come a, uh, become a comedian and an actor because you were basically insecure? And um, I think there's a certain amount of truth to that, the need for acceptance. There's a, there's a school of thought, I don't know if I subscribe to it or not, but there's a school of thought that suggests comedians have low self-esteem, which, if we had this revolutionary new device featured in this next infomercial, might have saved the world from the pain and suffering caused by Carrot Top. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? You're so stupid, I can't believe it. You're a fat loser. You're worthless and ugly. No wonder nobody likes you. Introducing the self-esteemer for those times when you feel inferior. I'm Chelsea Latch. Join us on a journey to self-confidence as we demonstrate the revolutionary new breakthrough in well-being, the self-esteemer. All thanks. All it takes is one whiff for you to feel completely worthy. You know, I feel good about me. I'm a winner. This amazing new breakthrough in modern medical technology is the astounding new invention created by Dr. Leopold Matthews, one of the world's leading behavioral psychologists. And now, through a special offer, you can own one of these revolutionary devices to use in your own home. Right, Dr. Matthews? Right, Chrissy. It's Chelsea. Right. In my 40 years of practice diagnosing a myriad of disorders, everything from overeating to megalomania to sexual addiction, I found out that 90% of the patients I saw had a deep-rooted feeling of low self-esteem as the underlying cause. So I decided to find a way to build confidence and eradicate self-doubt naturally, without the use of prescription drugs. How do you do it? Well, Chrissy, let me ask you something. Chelsea. What is the most pervasive <laughs> element in the universe? Air. No. Cheese. Water. 71% oh. of the earth is covered in it. 60% of our bodies are made up of it. I have invented a revolutionary process where I take simple tap water and heat it to precisely 212 degrees Fahrenheit, transforming it into an entirely different state. A highly heated compound, an invisible gas that I call steam. Ooh. A remarkable substance that, when inhaled, blocks the neural transmitters that pass your feelings of inadequacy to your brain, preventing you from the overwhelming sense of doubt and restoring your mood to one of sanguine optimism. I used to suffer from chronic anxiety, and it affected my performance at work, because when I was a child, my mother was relentlessly critical of me. I made her one of those pencil holders out of a juice can and spray-painted macaroni, and she told me it was ugly. But then I found Dr. Matthew's self-esteemer, and it changed my life. I was under hide and overweight. Bully started rumors that I didn't bathe. I had no friends. I mean, would you want to be friends with a short, pat, stinky kid? This eventually interfered with my being able to commit to a personal relationship as an adult. I didn't date until I was almost 35. And it was a blind date. Not just set up, she was actually blind. Because I didn't want her to see what a loser I was. Then I discovered Dr. Matthews, and he put me on a two week intensive program of STEAM with the self esteemer. And now I've got 12 girlfriends. The path to a better, more cocksure, self-satisfied you, once only available to the rich and influential, can now be yours. The first versions of the self-esteemer cost thousands of dollars. But through a special promotion, you'll pay just $19.99, plus shipping and handling charges for the confidence and self-assurance you dream of. Plus, if you order now, you'll also receive this lint lizard, the fabric magnet that will rid your wardrobe of pesky hairs and unwanted fibers so you will always look your best. One treatment with the self-esteemer, and I went right to my mother's house and told her what a mean, petty, and awful person she was, and how I would always be better than her, no matter what. And then I shoved that macaroni pencil holder right up her- But wait! Order now, and you'll also get this toilet angel. Keep all your personal items together within arm's reach of your seat. 
Why feel weak, powerless, and ineffectual when confidence and pride can be yours for less than the price of a tank of gas? But wait, order now and get a hat. This brightly colored straw hat, most people would be afraid to wear it because it's so garish and tasteless. But with the self-esteemer, you'll wear it and not give a hoot about what anybody thinks. Does the self-esteemer work? I'm convinced you'll think it does. In fact, I'm so sure you'll be satisfied with the self-esteemer that I'm not even offering a money-back guarantee. You'll buy it, and you'll like it. Why? Because you're a fat, ugly, worthless loser. And you'll pay anything to feel better about yourself. You think that's harsh? <laughs> Maybe, but who cares? Wait! Call the number on your screen right now and get two self-esteemers for the other person in your life who has no dignity. But order now. There are only a limited number of these available. Self-esteemer, because you're not worth it. But you will be. <laughs> the self-esteemer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the, the most important thing, you know what the, ask me, ask me this question, ask, hey, shut up now. I know this one, I know this Before one. Before when we needed you, where were you now? <laughs> <laughs> ask me, ask me, the, ask me in comedy, what's the most important thing? What's the most important thing? Timing. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. What's it going to take? Do I need to go out there and bribe every one of you? I know, it's hot as a bastard outside, but you're in air conditioning. And there are people who are doing funny things for you. Just you. Oh. And the thousands of you who are watching and listening. <laughs> Let's check in with Pope Francis. Hey. Let's see if he's treated anymore. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Having a meeting with the Cardinals tomorrow, thinking of changing my entrance music to Jesus Walks. <laughs> <laughs> see, who knew the Pontiff was a Kanye fan? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know Kanye was a, was a Pope fan because... You know, he got up during the pontiff's homily at the Sistine Chapel Easter Sunday. Yo, Frankie, I'm going to let you finish, but <laughs> Lift Yourself was one of the best videos of all time. <laughs> it wasn't the best video of all time, by the way. I'll tell you what the best video of all time was. The royal wedding, when they cut to Harry, <laughs> Harry's old girlfriend, Chelsea Davey. You know that look when you suddenly realize that you could have been the one who now has a valet to clip your toenails? <laughs> That's my favorite. We're obsessed here on the, on the Radio Hour with the royal couple, which is, which is why we now take you to another episode of The Adventures of Meghan and Harry at Home. This week, we drop in on the royal couple's newest venture, a cooking show for the BBC. Welcome everyone to Megan and Harry's cooking with an English accent. Real royal empire cuisine, so you commoners can feel as though you're eating like a queen. I hate to tell you this, Harry, but Britain's not exactly known as a food destination. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. Today, I'm going to prepare the same menu we had when we celebrated Grandmum's 92nd birthday dinner. We're going to cook authentic British dishes from royal family recipes. A delicious three-course royal meal. First, a lovely appetizer, royal scotch eggs. What's that? Hard-boiled eggs wrapped in sausage meat, covered in breadcrumbs, and deep-fried and eaten with mustard. Um... Ew. Followed by an amazing second course, royal jellied eel. Simply scrumptious. Chopped eels boiled in a spiced stock that when cooled, gels into a solid that is eaten cold. Oh, oh God, I think I'm gonna hurl. Then, for our star attraction entree, our main course, royal shepherd's pie. Oh, okay. Well, I've had that before. That's not bad. Splendid! Now to make a proper royal shepherd's pie, we must begin with our wonderful main ingredient. Real royal shepherd meat. You mean lamb, darling, or perhaps ground beef, don't you? Uh, no. You see, darling Megan, this is authentic royal cooking. We use nothing but the finest royal shepherd meat in our shepherd's pie. You mean shepherd, as in shepherd dog, like a German shepherd? Oh, heavens no! My God, German shepherd? That's the most inhumane thing I've ever heard. What do you think we are, barbarians? Using the meat of a poor, innocent, sweet little pet? Uh, oh, I don't think I shall ever be able to understand how you Americans think. Oh, 
I thought you were going to use dog meat. No, now I'm relieved. This is authentic royal cooking. And traditionally, the royals only use the meat of a young, tender royal shepherd. What? Hello, I'm Nigel. Wh <laughs> what? Who, who are you? Oh, I'm one of the chosen few who tended a royal flock. Can you believe my wife thought I was going to use the meat of a German shepherd? The dog? That's barbaric, that is. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I get it. This is a joke. It's very funny. <laughs> oh, I assure you, love, it's not a joke. What? We royals have feasted on the common shepherds for centuries. Nigel, if you'd be so kind. Certainly, Prince Harry. For queen and country. Wait a minute. You're not going to eat. Uh... What is it that you Americans say? Don't knock it till you've tried it. <laughs> It takes four hours to properly cook, but the crew prepared one earlier this evening. Here, love, have a taste. No, Harry, no, I can't. Oh, nonsense, darling. Come on, open wide. Here comes the royal carriage. Wait a second. That's not bad. <laughs> uh, that's me mate Ian. He's always very tasteful. Oh. Well, we have to pause for some adverts, but don't go away. When we come back, I'll show you how to make haggis. Sheep's entrails, heart, liver, and lungs, mixed with onions and oatmeal stuffed inside a ram's bladder and boiled to perfection. Oh, that actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Join the royal couple again next time in the adventures of Meghan and Harry at home. We, uh, hey, we, we hey, love Rob, the Rob, Rob, uh, the network wants you to read this. What? Again? Uh, I guess. During yeah. the show? It... It's the problem now. We at the Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Hour would like to make clear that the previous sketch was parody and in no way suggests the royal family are cannibals. <laughs> oh, okay. That seems fair. Um, although, to be honest with you, I, I've eaten British food, and I think a hairy guy named Nigel would be a step up. Uh, but let's check in on the Pope again. Yes, another tweet. Just listened to Madonna's Like a Virgin. Hashtag, I don't get it. Ooh, sounds like we have company. I wonder who it could be. <gasps> oh, look, it's Yoko. Hello again. How lovely to see you all. Wow, welcome back, Yoko. Thank you, Rob. Uh, wait, she's not Rob, that's Whitney. Yes, uh, of course. It's hard to tell with him. He plays so many different characters on the program. It's hard to tell who's him and who's not. Anyway, what's new, Yoko? Well, Rob, I have a new installation at the Museum of Modern Art. It's called A Cry for Peace. Oh, that's exciting. What is it? A series of sculptures of my uvula made out of string cheese. <laughs> Uvula? Yes, you know that little punching bag that hangs at the back of your throat? Okay. I also just finished recording another song for my new album, you know. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. What's that called? Harmony. <laughs> Music is so very meta, you know. Wait, what? What? What is meta? I don't know, Rob. I uh, I read an article about it in Apology magazine, but it, it it inspired me to create a drink for Starbucks. Starbucks? Yes, a drink for peace. I believe that the commercialization of the sale of caffeinated beverages is the thing that will finally bring some symmetry and balance to the world. Really. That's the story I'm going with. Your, your own signature beverage? Yes, the mocha ono. Uh, made from 100% sustainable mocha. Well, do you have any haiku poems for us today? Oh, you mean the ancient Japanese poetry form? Yes. The blank verse consisting of three lines totaling only 17 syllables? Uh-huh. One line of five syllables, second line of seven syllables, third line of five syllables? Yes. No. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. <laughs> this is a haiku about the stillness of nature and how its stark simplicity is a metaphor for the insignificance of our existence as human beings. What's it called? The silence of spring. Mm. The quiet at dawn. Gentle, tender raindrops fall. My husband is dead. 
Wow. I'm, I'm speechless. Wow. Yeah. I yes. mean, Yoko, please, could you give us another yeah. one? Please? Yeah. Oh, okay, Rob. This is a haiku poem about the power of random acts of kindness to revolutionize humanity, the world, and the universe with positive energy, empathy, and love. And it's called? Lala. Lala? Yes, it's an allegory. Okay. Oh. It's a work in progress. Shall I do it for you? Oh, please. Okay. <clears throat> la, 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 la. La, 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 la. My Lala is dead. Is. Yoko Ono, everybody. Everybody, sing for peace. Ah! Hey, 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 was that Yoko Ono? Did I miss her again? again. Damn. Oh. You know what that means. Here she come, here she come, here she come. <laughs> what she wear, what she wear, what she wear? What's her name, what's her name, what's her name? It's time for Mandy Lee Panty Hose Thompson. Oh, gee whiz, Rob. Thank you. That was quite an introduction. Oh, what a lovely theme song. That's my legendary Barry White impression. Oh, I just love the Bee Gees. Well, no, he's not. Um, so I thought I'd do a something a little different this week, besides give out some household hacks to followers of your podcast. Well, actually, I think we'd like to keep things as they were last time. That seemed to work pretty well for oh, us. Oh, so... Everything is going to be the same? You're not going to do anything different every week? Well, well, well no. There'll be some new sketches, new characters, new material. Oh, uh, like that Megan and Harry thing? That was different? Well, it was the next episode in the series. It's a, it's a, it's a continuing segment. Uh-huh. And uh, Yoko Loco? Oh, no. That's what I said when I heard she was back on. Oh, no! <laughs> well, she's one of oh, our... Oh, I'm just joshing you, Rob. I'm happy to be here. But I went to the movies last weekend, and I did want to talk about a movie I saw. Tag. Oh, you didn't see Incredibles 2, too? Well, no, I didn't see The Incredibles 22. But I did see Incredibles 2 also. But Tag... Oh, jeepers, did that one bring back memories of the schoolyard? Those happy days of childhood fun and frivolity. <laughs> you mean frivolity? Frivolity. That's what I said, Rob. Yes. And, uh, and uh, you know... Um, Tag, that's the, that's the movie where it's about the real-life guys in Spokane, Washington, who get together once a year, and for a month they play the game of Tag. Yeah, it, it reminds of a game the fellas play in Moose Lake where I'm from. Oh, really? Like what? Hot dog tag. That's where one person is it. And if a player is tagged, he or she must lay flat on the ground with hands by their side, legs together, as if they were a hot dog. To get back into the game, two free players need to lie on either side of the hot dog to form the buns. <laughs> Sounds interesting. It's a great icebreaker. Just a crock pot full of fun. Uh, I guess. Uh-huh. And, oh, and then there's Blind Man's Bluff. Whoever is it has to wear a blindfold, and the other players try to direct them across a busy intersection. Oh, that, that, that sounds dangerous. Yeah, well, you got to do something to get cheap thrills in Moose Lake. God, weren't you going to review a movie? Oh, yeah, of course. Tag. Fine. What would what, you think? Um, I liked it. That's it? Oh, well, I liked The Incredibles, too, also. Two pantyhose legs up. There she go, there she go, there she go. Ladies and gentlemen, my, my future ex-wife, Panty Hose Thompson. All right, let's check in with His Holiness again.
Just treat it. Had too much sacramental wine at midnight mass last night. My mouth is drier than the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> okay. Um, we would like to welcome a new sponsor to the Radio Hour, uh, a new streaming service like uh, Hulu and Netflix that we're hoping to be featured on. Until then, you can watch us on our Facebook page and YouTube, download us on iTunes and the OGPodcastNetwork.com. Um, we also uh, have some things on our Facebook page, and uh, the new YouTube channel has some behind-the-scenes videos, and you get some up-to-date information, and, and you also get like ideas of where we're going next week. Like Next week, we're going to be doing something called the Rob Reboot, where we take a, like a classic television show from like the 70s or whatever, and we, we bring them into the, the modern age. So Happy Days will be the first show that we... Yeah, and the Fonz no longer has a motorcycle. He has a, a little rascal scooter. Um, but until then, check out Pomegranate. Net. Introducing Pomegranate Net, the new internet streaming service. Now you can watch your favorite shows on demand anytime, anyplace, on any device you want. Binge all seven Police Academy movies, every episode of Joni Loves Chachi, and soon-to-be award-winning original programming like Mike Tyson's Infinite Universe. This week we're going to discuss the boundaries of space-time called the Event Horizon. However, quantum field theory and curved space-time predict that event horizons within the same spectrum as a body of temperature inversely proportional to its mass, approximately billions of degrees Kelvin, makes it essentially impossible to observe stellar mass such as black holes, which is ludicrous because I've observed it, I've seen pictures, they're fabulous. Pomegranate, the only place where you'll find reality nature shows like Very, Very Dangerous, Pretty Lethal, Really, You Could Get Seriously Killed Out Here, Wild Terrain with Manatee Morrison. This is a regular common pavement app. You have him in your house, but uh, make no mistake, this little fella's not just an unwanted guest at your picnic ruining your potato salad. On the insect pain index, out of a scale of 1 to 10, a bite from one of these guys rates about a 0 0.05. But I'm going to brave it out. I'm about to enter the bite zone with a pavement amp. Let me just place it in my forearm and... find great comedy on Pomegranate Net, like Speechless, Life in a House Where the Entire Family is Made Up of Mimes. <laughs> the only sound you'll hear is laughter on Pomegranate Net. Plus, get live theatrical performances like Peter Dinklage as Willie Loman in Death of a Little Salesman, Antonio Banderas in Gatos, the Hispanic Repertory Company's production of Cats, David Hasselhoff as Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady, and live from Radio City Music Hall, Andrew Dice Clay reads passages from the vagina monologues. My vagina's angry. It's furious and it needs to talk. Oh! Pomegranate. <laughs> Watch it on your TV, desktop computer, tablet, laptop, mobile phone, smartwatch, pacemaker, or defibrillator. So sign up today because you don't want to miss that sitcom with the mimes. No, no. I wasn't sure everybody was going to get that joke. <laughs> you know, sometimes I do them just for me, you know. I like to do those highbrow, classic, think piece, like really mm -hmm. classic right. kind of That's sketches. Right. Classy. I, I, used to do, uh, I used to do something in my act. I used to do um, famous people's voicemail <laughs> messages. Um, you know, like uh, Helen Keller's voicemail message. It was... Very tasteful, very... <laughs> I used to end it with Jean-Paul Sartre's voicemail message. You know, hello, I'm not here right now. You're not here right now. Nobody is really here right now. Do not leave a message because there is no beep. <laughs> See, because he was an existentialist and he just... I don't get it. Oh, look, the Pope's tweeted again. <laughs> Fun fact, Eucharist is gluten-free. I love this guy. <laughs> you know, Jesus was really the first superhero. I don't know if you knew that. I mean, and superhero movies are very big this summer. See, this is why they call me king of the segways. Um, 
summer blockbusters, superhero movies, Infinity Wars, Deadpool, Incredibles 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp is coming out. We decided that we should do something with superheroes, our own summertime blockbuster. And when you think of summer, besides a blockbuster, what's the first thing that comes to mind? That's right, the Jersey Shore. This Monday on Pomegranate Net, what happens when eight superheroes, weary from the pressures of fighting crime and making blockbuster movies, decide to share a vacation home on the Jersey Shore? Starring Nicole, Snooki Polizzi as Wonder Woman, Mike the Situation Sorrentino as Batman, DJ Paulie D as Superman, Jennifer J. Wow Farley as Lois Lane, and Vinny Guadagino as Robin, and the voice of Dina Cortez as Invisible Girl on Jersey Shore Superhero Vacation Beach House. Cabs are here? Who's coming to the club? Whoa. Batman, you're not going to go out like that, are you? What's wrong with a cape and cow? You're wearing your Wonder Woman costume. Because I look hot in it. But I am not going out clubbing with you. Not if you're going to do that embarrassing bat dance again. Come on, you love it. Hello, you look like an idiot. You weren't saying that last week in the hot tub when I was tying you up with your lasso of truth. Oh, please, don't remind me. I'm still trying to forget that. I'm never doing Jaeger shots with Spider-Man ever again. Hey, uh, who stole my tapioca pudding? I had some tapioca pudding in the fridge. Jeez, Superman, you just ate half a tray of sausage and peppers. Hey, I'm the man of steel, needs my strength. Invisible girl! Are you coming, invisible girl? I'm right here. God damn it, stop doing that. I told you, turn off the superpowers when we're in the house. Hey, you know I have body issues. Yeah, Clark's the one who should have the body issues. Man of steel, more like abs of tapioca pudding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sick of you, Bruce. You, that little teenage boyfriend of yours, and that prissy little English butler. You're nothing but a rich sissy boy. Hey, I didn't come on this show to make friends, okay? So I don't care what you think of me, Superman. You're an alien. An illegal alien, by the way. I'll get your Krypton ass deported. Oh, uh, yeah, just try it. I'll wrap that utility belt around your neck. Yeah, I gave you a beating once. I can do it again. Oh, big man. Try it without some kryptonite, bat. No, I killed you. I killed you. <laughs> Hey, 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 shut the hell up, will ya? I'm trying Whatever. to sleep. Oh, look who finally decided to wake up. Thanks for joining us, Robin. I thought you was dead or something. What time is it? 10.30. Uh, P.M. Wow, sorry, dudes, but Nightwing got the hookup last night. I was smushing. Oh, yeah, with who? Uh, this landmine, backpack, total MILF dude, she was DTF. Hey, Robin, come back to bed. I want to rock your daily planet some more. Lois? Oops. Clark, what are you doing here? Uh-oh, awkward. You had sex with Robin? How could you? I thought he was gay and he and the Batman were doing things. No, uh-uh, not me. No, no. Nope. Uh, Robin's not gay. Believe me. Damn it, Invisible Girl, stop doing that. Robin, you an Invisible Girl? You an Invisible Girl? You're kidding me, right? Is this true? Come on, I never said we were exclusive. Lois, I can't believe you slept with Robin. Oh, you can believe it, Clark. There's a reason why they call him the boy wonder. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, baby. You ain't so bad yourself. Wonder Woman 2? Did you bang everybody in the house? Not me. Uh-uh, nope. <laughs> you know, well, you know what? I'm out of here. Samantha Lois, jealous? You threaten because I'm so much more of a woman than you? At least I don't need to run around in hot pants and an armor bustier with my boobs, hang boobs hanging out like a skank. Ah, oh, bitch, by the power of ISIS, take that. Hi, 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 Bring hi, it on, hi, Amazon. Oh, I hi, swear to God. Go fight. Go fight. Hey, 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 hey. Cabs are here. Oh. Jersey Shore Superhero Vacation Beach House, this Monday at 8, only on Pomegranate Nets. Okay, gather around. I got something important I want to tell the housemates. Well, what's going on? I don't know. Superman says he's got an announcement. He says it's important. It's something really big. What is it, Clark? I just got a job at the clam bar on the boardwalk. Yeah! Party. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the clam bar. What part of the Jersey Shore are you from, Constantine? That's what I, I want to know. Like, <laughs> did, did you go to like Oxford? Like yeah, probably, yeah. born in Asbury Park, and then just—you're <laughs> <laughs> the most erudite <laughs> do 
douchebag I've ever heard in my life. I mean, it's just, <laughs> Yo, thank you, Lois. I mean, it was like, just, <laughs> I was smushing. <laughs> Smush it. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Everyone. Yeah, it's okay. It's hard for you to dumb it down. I know. It's, yeah, I know. It's, it's, not, not for me, though. Oh. It's always easy for me to dumb it down. Right, one of the segments that we introduced last week uh, on the Radio Hour was our version of that NPR um, uh, serial where they took the murder and they followed it for 12 weeks. Um, well, we decided we we're going to do our own version of that. We we're going to combine it with Dateline because we love Keith Morrison because he always sounds happy, even though he's talking about horrible, hideous murders. Uh, if you didn't see last week's episode, you can check it out on iTunes or ogpodcastnetwork.com. But if you didn't, it doesn't really make a difference. It's not like this like a big plot thing going on that you'll be lost. <laughs> you'll pretty much get it when you get in the middle of it. It's, uh, it's something that we call Death Can Kill. Last week on Death Can Kill. Lodi, New Jersey, a sleepy suburban town just outside of New York City, where Dr. Rodney Kolodny was a well-respected dentist. He was known as Dr. Painless for his reputation to perform even the most complicated dental procedures without discomfort. But one day, something happened that even with laughing gas was no laughing matter. In fact, it was so horrifying it made the community want to rinse and spit. What evidence would Detective Edie Bexon find other than Wanda's sister, Mary, finding Wanda on the living room floor, her mouth stuffed with gauze, a tightly wound noose of dental floss tied around her neck? Mystery, intrigue, murder, and a controversy over brunch at the Perky Turkey. You had the omelets. I know what I had. I had the pancakes. And now, the continuation of Death Can Kill, Painless Dentist, Painful murder. Police Detective Sergeant Edie Bexon arrived on the scene and found Dr. Kolodny's wife Wanda on the living room floor of their Lodi, New Jersey home. Don't touch anything, ma'am. This is an active crime scene. Oh, don't try to get her to talk to you, Detective. She's ignoring you. She does that all the time. It's all about her. Ma'am, I don't know how to say this, but this woman is dead. Oh. Okay, well, why don't you try it this way? This woman is dead! Hmm? Like you're excited or something. Or maybe like you're confused. This woman is dead? Or just flat, you know, because like you see this thing all the time. This woman is dead. But I don't want to give you a line reading. No, you don't understand. This woman is dead. Eh, okay, well, if that's the one you want to go with. Something about this scenario didn't seem quite right to Detective Bixon. Something just didn't seem quite right with this scenario. I took Mrs. Kolodny's pulse to make sure she was, indeed, dead. I remember thinking, I know this woman. She's married to Kolodny, the dentist. I went to him for reconstructive periodontal once, cost me a fortune, and it hurt like hell. Painless, my ass. But I also remembered she was a restaurant reviewer for the Lodi Observer. But one thing was for sure, with all her teeth pulled out, she wasn't going to be eating much anymore. That and also because she was dead. At that moment, Dr. Kolodny himself walked in. He was apparently completely unaware that his wife had been murdered in the front hall. My heart stopped. I saw Mary and I saw the detective. And then I saw Wanda. Not only was she dead, but those gums. Her gums were in terrible shape. I knelt down immediately to take a closer look. She had dental floss around her neck. She never really knew how to floss properly. Despite his apparent shock and surprise, Dr. Kolodny was immediately considered a prime suspect in his wife's murder. I couldn't believe I was being arrested. Just because my wife had been strangled with dental floss and all her teeth had been removed and her mouth was stuffed with gauze, I mean, it looked like a classic case of suicide to me. I sent everybody out of the room and started checking the body for clues. There was a small brown speck on one of the pieces of gauze. I put it in an evidence bag and sent it off to forensic. And then I called the perky turkey to make sure she was telling the truth about taking her mother there for brunch. The story checked out. They were there. And Mary had the pancakes all right, with whipped cream and strawberries on top. I should have had the pancakes. The omelet was so dry. But I was actually surprised when Mary said they were taking me to the Perky Turkey because Wanda hated that place. But getting herself murdered just to get out of going, she ruined Mother's Day for me. Enough! 
The Kaladi murder had turned Lodi into a hotbed of gossip and innuendo. No one was immune, not even if you had all your shots. Rodney Kalani went from being a painless dentist to a periodontal murderer, but no one, not even Wanda, could have seen the next twist in the case. Well, yeah, because she was dead. But I had my suspicions, and turns out I was right. Forensics came back with the results of the test on the brown spot on the gauze. It was maple syrup. <laughs> Join us next week for the shocking conclusion to what came to be known as the case of an overbite too far. <laughs> Tune in next time when we hear Dr. Kolodny say, I was kept in prison without bail for six months awaiting trial. I was in general population. It was pure hell. I've never seen any, I've never seen such awful dental hygiene in my life. I couldn't do anything about it. Um, <laughs> on the next death can kill. <laughs> You'd never know we rehearsed this, would you? Uh, Let's check it out Pope Francis one last time. Let's see if he's tweeted again. Yep, here it is. Just hit 18 million followers. Not trying to brag, but hashtag Jesus only had 12 disciples. <laughs> oh, we're going to hell. <laughs> Now, everybody knows that I'm not just a comedian and uh, star of radio and television. I, uh, I have quite an extensive list of uh, Broadway credits. Um, a theater uh, guy trained classically in theater. I, I was in the uh, Dyslexic Theater Company's production of Annie Get Your Nug and, um, and Helen Keller, the musical. But I, uh, <laughs> I'm very excited. I didn't tell you guys this before because I didn't want it to be all about me. Um, I just got a new part in the new Lynn Manuel Miranda show. What? No what? way. Yes. That's huge. Yes. The theatrical genius behind some of Broadway's greatest hits, In the Heights, yep. Hamilton, That's Ooh. Bring It On. Yes. Wait, what? Well, yeah. now he's. <laughs> thank you. Can you run around the room so it sounds like everybody got that joke? That would really help us out a lot. Um, well, now he's taking on the story of the beloved, legendary public television children's show host, Fred Rogers. And I am playing the title role in a new smash hit musical coming to Broadway, Lynn Manuel Miranda's Rogers. How does a Pennsylvania puppeteer, Presbyterian minister, television host who was anything but sinister? Heart on his sleeve, he preconceived the kingdom known as the neighborhood of make believe. Not a hater. He curried favor, a mover and a shaker. A money maker, not a faker. He had the flavor, made everybody wanna be his neighbor. Rock PBS with finesse to great success. Don't understand it, but nonetheless, I digress. Didn't stress, he was the best. In a cardigan and comfy shoes, he was always dressed. He had a kind face and a sweet personality Created a space of great congeniality For that he earned a place in TV immortality So what was the name of this harmonious locality? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood Neighborhood is not like any other hood Won't you be my neighbor? It makes me feel uncomfortable You're very special, did you know that? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood Hugs are very special kinds of feelings Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood comes Mr. McFeely. It's not like any other hood. He has a speedy delivery for me. It makes me feel uncomfortable. It's some pictures I took on vacation. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It was a cruise to Hawaii. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. This is a photo of me in a moo. It's not like any other hood. Can you say moo? It makes me feel uncomfortable. Here's one of me in a tank top and culottes. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Can you say culottes? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It's nice to dress up to feel pretty. Here's a sleeveless, strapless number I wore. Uh-oh, here's a shot of me in my thong. Are you feeling me, McFeely? Can you say smash hit? 
Can you say $1,800 a ticket? <laughs> now it's time for our special musical guest, ladies and gentlemen. They've uh, been called the planet's hottest rocking alternative band. Their music is flavored with the social commentary of folk and 60s rock with the sonic and visual impact of punk. I did my research. I found their website. Um, their current uh, album, More Fun in the Service Economy, is available on CD Baby, uh, Spotify, Facebook. Uh, their new album, uh, coming soon, is a self-titled album, which means the title is the name of the band. Please welcome, from Long Island, ladies and gentlemen, Media Crime. <laughs> You'll see why I had to do that in a little while. It's called Fries. There 
doing your order. Oh no, you hold on by the drive though. Got everything? Are you sure? How about a nice styrofoam box and take it all home? Well, let's check in uh, one last time at Pope Francis. Oh, he just tagged us. Just found out I got some shout outs on the Raw Pod at Radio Comedy Hour podcast. Just subscribed on YouTube. Hashtag Rabio. You got some explaining to do. Okay, well, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Tell your friends, be like Pope Francis, subscribe to us. Tunes, ogpodcastnetwork.com. Don't miss a single episode. Follow us on Twitter at Robbio Radio and on Instagram, Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy. Check out our brand new Rob Bartlett Radio Hour YouTube channel. Special thanks to our special musical guest, Media Crime. Our program is produced by Gary Grant and me, Rob Bartlett. Written by Andrew Smith and me, Rob Bartlett. Featuring Megan Samard. Host Thompson, Andy Smithy, Constantine Pappas, Whitney Johnson, Alyssa Alter, and me, Rob Parlett. Music, original music composed by Gary Grant, Steve Mecca, and me. Well, actually, just Gary and Steve, but it doesn't do with that one. We come to you live each week from the Hackensack Meridian Health Stage 17, streamed by the OG Podcast Network, directed by Gary Grant, a production of Baby Hit Productions and Gary Grant Talent Associates. Special thanks to Don Imus. No animals were harmed in the recording of this podcast. Subscribe to us, tell your friends. See you next week, everybody. Bye.